All right, cool. So now we're gonna move on to some optional accessories that you may find useful for yourself. Um, depends on the level of camera you have. So mo the accessories I'm gonna show you now, most of them are gonna work with the D700 because they're higher quality, like not higher quality, but a higher level. You can get very similar accessories and lenses for your camera, depending on what model it is, depending on what make it is, um, that have the same a similar function. So I'm gonna show you stuff here that might not necessarily be all end all, but it's gonna be something very similar. I'm also gonna talk about lenses. Um, I'm not gonna talk about lens, I'm not gonna go into depth about the lens type yet, just yet, I'm gonna introduce them. Lens type will come later, because um, it's gonna require more than one or two 10 minute videos. Um, I have all the different lens types though, for the most part, to show you and to talk about, as well as some accessories. So first off, I'm gonna start with um, an accessory I really like. Most SLRs, you can get an external battery pack, a grip. Um, this is going to attach the bottom of the camera. I'll show you with the D700. This one is the MBD10. Attaches onto the bottom of the DS um, or the uh, D700, and as you can see, makes it look a little more badass. Not only that, it balances out the weight of this camera, which is kind of nice. Um, it's a really heavy camera to just lug around around your neck, which is also why I bought a neoprene strap for it. Replace the uh, kind of uncomfortable one Nikon gives you. Um, these battery packs will also enable you to shoot in portrait mode. It's got a selector on the back as well as a shutter and both dials. And you also have the option, uh, at least with the MPD-10, I'm not sure about the other ones, about placing batteries or another Nikon battery in. The advantage to that is it's going to give you more battery power, but it's also going to let you shoot at higher frame rates. Kind of cool. Um, another accessory that a lot of people want to talk about is flash. This is a Nikon SB900. Uh, pretty nice little flash. Can be used externally um, as well as on the camera. And on the top of the camera there's that little ledge called the hot shoe. Right here. The flash is just going to slide right in. We'll go into that in another video though. Um, with flashes, it's nice to have one if you are willing to spend the money on an external that will swivel. So you can do something called bounce flash, and we'll go over bounce flash. That's definitely something I want to talk about. Um, the cameras give you lots of controls on the flash. Nikon's uh, TTL system is great, works intuitively with your camera and sort of sets the flash to what it needs to be. But you can also shoot manually, and if you don't have one of these, it's okay. You can get smaller ones. I know Canon makes a great speed light, a uh, little one. It just pops up and goes, and you can actually bounce it. Um, but definitely something you need to have, but we'll go into these in a little bit more depth later. Uh, other accessories, I really recommend getting your hands on one of these. They're really cheap. This one cost me about $10. This is a lens pen. Basically what it is, is it's a pop-out brush. You can dust all the crap off your lens with. And then there's a little pen on the top with a cleaning agent embedded in the cap that you can use to rub in circles and clean your lens off. Um, I also recommend buying filters for your lenses. So in case something happens, you're going to crack the filter and not the front element. Um, I can show you one of my filters. I use BMW filters. They're a lot more expensive, but they're really high quality for my lenses because it's going to protect you from getting a lot of gunk on them. I've got fingerprints on these, but my glass is pristine. Um, glass is a technical jargon in photography for lenses. You'll get used to it. We say a lot of weird things. In terms of lens types, I've got a couple different ones here. Um, hmm, what do I want to start with? A basic uh, prime lens, okay? This is a prime lens. This is a 50 millimeter lens. Um, it's a Nikon uh, 50 millimeter um, f1.4. We'll get into that later too. Nice little lens. Uh, prime lens, so it doesn't zoom. There is no, you know, doesn't zoom in at all. You can manually focus it. It's exactly 50 millimeters. It's constantly, constantly there. I really like this lens. The advantage of these is that they're very sharp. And the aperture doesn't change. It's it's you can have a very um, wide open aperture and get really sharp images uh, at really crappy light, which is nice. It's a great advantage to having a prime lens, and they're also considerably cheaper um, because they don't zoom. So that's a prime lens. This is an Icon uh, AFS fifty um, ultra wide angle or wide angle lens. This is an ultra wide zoom. This is the Nikon 14 to 24 uh, N series, which means it's nano crystal coated. This is an expensive lens. It's also very heavy. 
as you can see, it's kind of domed um, to kind of give it, not a fisheye effect, but the true ultra wide effect. I'll show you some photos taken with each of these as we go through a lens, um, a lens video within the next couple of days. And then I'll show you what these look like when you take pictures with them. Um, but this is a ultra wide to wide angle lens. I have just a regular wide angle as well. This is a 28 to 70 millimeter. I actually just bought this for hundred bucks off eBay, brand new, or sorry, used. Um, beautiful older lens. It's a little bit slower than my other glass, but it's in great shape. And uh, the nice thing about this is it's a zoom lens as well, as you can see the pops in and out. Um, it's also a, not a G series, which means it has an aperture ring on it. We'll go into that as well, but kind of a cool feature to have. So it's a, it's a mid-range zoom lens. It's a standard zoom lens, which means it's going to take you from about a wide light angle to a little bit of a telephoto. All right. Um, I have a lens a friend loaned me here. This is a uh, 50 millimeter, 1.8 or 1.18. It's a Nikon series E lens. Uh, very tiny, but it's a macro lens. And with this, I tend to use what these, these are called extension tubes. Another neat feature if you want to do macro, um, you're going to have to have a lens with an aperture ring on it. So that little orange ring I showed you um, to be able to use these. But the resulting images are really neat. Got to be manual focus though. Um, last but not least, actually I've got two more accessories I want to show you. Just grab one here. Um, lens hoods. I've got two types of lens hoods here. I have a larger uh, flower shaped one and a smaller one. This one's for the 50 and this one's for the next lens I'm going to show you. Um, these cut out glare basically like the brim of a hat does and they're extremely useful. All right. The final piece of gear I'm going to show you that is kind of a nice thing to have is a telephoto lens. This is a Nikon 7200 VR1 um, ED and Nikon has just put, has put out a new version of this which is why I got this one somewhat cheaper used. Beautiful condition though. Again, I have a filter on the end of it, a BMW filter, just to protect the front element because this is a really pricey lens. So a telephoto lens is gonna give you a lot more length. You're gonna be able to zoom in a lot closer, really good for sports and wildlife photography. Um, and most of them come with a tripod collar like this. And the advantage of this is you can mount the lens on a tripod or a monopod and save yourself from camera shake or lens shake. It's also VR, so that sort of helps out as well. Um, so yeah, that's the gear video. I'm going to have to divide it up into two, so you're probably on part two by now. Um, there's a lot to go on, but we'll go into more depth about this stuff as we move on so you guys can see um, how things work, what they are, and how to use them. All right, so if you have any questions at all, if you have any uh, comments, please feel free to uh, drop me an email, mal at captivating-sky.net. Uh, talk to you later. Keep your stick on the ice.